Hey guys, y'all all right tonight? All right, so good to see y'all. I didn't hear from half of y'all. Y'all all right tonight? Oh, okay, there y'all go. Welcome. All right, so listen. Um, I, was, I was sent uh, a few uh, emails slash DMs. Um, with, no, 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 it's not bad, guys. Y'all calm down. Uh, a few emails slash DMs about questions from our series, right? About questions that, that people had. Um, we covered a lot over the last four or five weeks, six weeks, um, and I don't want you to miss it. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? I don't want you to miss it, even if you're online. I acknowledge, I openly acknowledge, and I and I want to let you know that I realize, as a minister of the gospel, as a preacher, but more importantly, just as a Christian, we've covered a lot of scripture, a lot of ground for the last six weeks. So, uh, so I got a couple, I got a couple messages, um, but there was one DM that really struck me, like, because I had a whole nother series to go into, like, boom, 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 because y'all ain't going to see me for a while type of thing, but I think that we need to slow down a little bit. We need to take today, and let's make sure we got clarity. Does that make sense? Let's make sure we got clarity. Let me remind the Young Adults of Antioch Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church, whether you join here or you just come for Monday nights, doesn't matter to me. But let me remind you, tonight is about you, not me. You understand? So, and not arrogantly speaking, but I'm just teaching the stuff, right? But all of us got to live it. So once we get to these topics and we get to these places where... Your understanding runs out. You need somebody to say some again, explain that further, so on and so forth. We designed this space just for that, right? So I don't want us to get into a habit because I feel like we are in that habit and I want us to break it before we get used to it, where we just come in, listen, ooh, ah, take notes and leave. That's how most of us who've been in church for a while got into our complicated relationship with Christ and with his church is because we mastered showing up and not understanding, right? And there were spaces that did not allow us to ask questions. Now, I'm going to be honest with y'all. We're going to do it tonight, but there are some questions where we're going to have to say, uh, let's talk about that next week, right? Write that down. Let me read that. Let me go home and let me do my due diligence so that I make sure I give you the best, most clear answer. There are other answers like, dang, I wish you would have asked that while we was in here because we could have knocked that out. That could have took us in a whole different way. I'm going to tell y'all like I tell all anywhere I teach. Your question opens the door for someone else's answer. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Your question, you have a question, but your question may clarify another thing for somebody else that they're struggling with that they don't even have the strength to acknowledge. So when you withhold your questions, you cripple somebody else. Does that make sense? Because sometimes your questions is for your understanding, and sometimes the Holy Ghost, like, the person next to you really struggling with that, ask that real quick. And you're like, no, nah, I don't want to stop them from talking. I don't want to interrupt. And all of a sudden, now both of y'all, you disobedient and the other person ignorant. You get what I'm saying? Not negatively speaking. I'm saying we've left somebody in ignorance when this is designed to help all of us. 
Nobody who we put up here is so in love with preaching and teaching they can't be interrupted. Or if we find out that they are, they just won't be up here again. Because that's not the space we're trying to build. We're trying to build, a, like, where, when Jesus, whenever Jesus goes into a temple, whenever his apostles or disciples go into the temple, the whole purpose of the temple is just a place where people who believe in God or people who believe in God and his Christ can reason together. It's supposed to be like this, if need be, this back and forth until we both arrive at what we call truth. Does that make sense or no? Everybody good with that? Now, I'm not fussing. I'm just, I'm just trying to encourage you here. All right. So what we've done is on every table, there are, there are index cards. There are pens. If you, and, and now listen, let, let, me, let me state my case here, all right? Uh, we, we just talking about the Bible and whatnot, all right? That's the only questions we need tonight. Um, some of y'all may have other burning questions in your heart. Talk to God about those. That ain't me. All right. That's not my that's not my gift. That's not my call. That's not my lane. Um, but I do want to make sure as it pertains to God saying no. That all of us are on the same page. Does that make sense? The questions we have. Uh, well, I kind of understood that. But could you clarify this? All that type of stuff is what I'm asking you to put on these cards tonight um, so that we can enter into a healthy dialogue um, in the dialogue portion, I'll be giving you answers and looking up stuff, but there may be some people out there that feel like they grasp the concept. If you have that security in your heart, you are more than welcome to speak. Now, friends, hear me. Uh, if, if you do decide to speak um, on a thing, like in an answer type of form, um, number one, I ask that you be very brief, right? Because um, we got a lot to track to tonight. But number two, I ask that you be sure that the Lord wants you to speak and it's not you, right? Sometimes we feel like we know the right answer, but that feeling, only, that's not the real feeling. It just feels like the right answer, but the feeling that motivated that feeling was the feeling to be heard by a group of people, right? So the Bible says, test every spirit by the spirit. Just, just, just before you raise your hand, say, Lord, should I be talking right now? Or should I be listening? All right? I have to do that a lot um, in a lot of our staff meetings because I have a lot to say, but the Lord don't want me to say my lot. Like, he just, nah, son, just sit there. Just smile and be quiet. I'm like, Lord, but, you know, that's, they lying. They, not, they didn't do nothing, right? I want to say it out loud so at least the whole staff can be like, oh, okay, I ain't the only one that felt that way. But the Lord's like, no, don't, nuh-uh, don't, nuh-uh, hush, right? So I just want us to be cautious of that, too, because y'all know I, I ain't always rap too tight, so I'm just going to have them cut off the microphone. We're going to move on like nothing happened. But I don't want to embarrass nobody. Now, I'm, I'm really conscious about that. I don't want to embarrass nobody because I don't want nobody to embarrass me. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. So, um, long story short, y'all got cards on y'all table. I'm going to go through the first couple questions that was asked to me on Instagram. Is my Instagram friends here tonight? I, I don't want to call the name out because then it feels weird. But Instagram friend, I got your questions here. Um, I told you that I was going to respond after I did some stuff. Child, I've been doing stuff ever since I said I was going to do some stuff. So uh, I want to make sure that I, I answer all of the questions that you ask. I got those in front of me. And then we'll just kind of navigate through um, some other spaces. Y'all good with that? Yes? All right. Let me tell you all one other thing, and then I'm going to get started. The other thing is... Um, Half of y'all didn't get y'all no food, so I encourage y'all to get up and get y'all some food. Don't, don't play with me now, because we already, you know, we spent a lot of money on y'all food. So make sure y'all eat. Y'all shouldn't have to go home hungry. Amen. We want to feed you from the Bible, but we also just want to feed you, right? Y'all get y'all a little food now. Y'all been at work all day. Um, so make sure you get y'all something to eat and try the butter joint. I don't eat they food without the butter, right? Um, so y'all make sure y'all do that. Y'all make sure y'all do that now. Don't, don't play with it, right? Um, make sure y'all do that. I don't care what they say. Pineapples belong on pizza. That's... That's neither here nor there. Um, if you don't like that, that's why God didn't give you a microphone. You got to keep those type of opinions to yourself. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, that's number one. Number two, number two is my hope is that I can get you, I hope I can get you started on the chapter of the Bible tonight. That's going to be at the very end. I hope I can get you started on the, uh, uh, on the chapter of the Bible tonight that you're going to kind of wrestle with for a couple weeks, which is going to be a really great experience for you. Um, number, the last announcement is we schedule this to start at seven o'clock every week, right? Start at seven o'clock. The reason why we schedule it to start at seven o'clock, because we still believe in community. We believe that our time from seven to seven 30 is an opportunity for you to get at a table with folks you don't know, folks you're getting to know, and, and for you to be able to create 
a gospel-based community, right? These may not be my friends I get real drunk with, amen. But these are the friends I can say, hey, I can't tell you a lot of details, but can you pray for me? You get what I'm saying? Because you can't. Y'all crazy. Y'all ask, y'all going on Facebook saying, can you pray for me? Child, I'm not asking 800 million people to pray. I don't even know which God people be praying to, right? Y'all be manifesting and burning stuff. You can't pray for me, right? I'm serious. You can't call my stuff into the atmosphere. You need to talk to God about me, right? I was on the phone with two workers from this church. I ain't going to say their names, but I hope they in here. Um, are they in here, Siobhan? Sharon and Bree, are they in here? They're not in here? Cool. All right, so I was on the phone with Sharon and Bree, right? And, and they're not in here. That's their fault for being in the wrong space. So I'm on the phone with them. Bree just starts reading horoscopes, like out of nowhere. So I'm like, friend, what you doing? Well, I was just letting you know. I said, friend, you're not letting me know. God going to kill you for messing with me like this, right? You don't read no horoscope over me, friend. I don't. I, friend, what are we doing? <laughs> so she's off my prayer list, just like that, you know? It's just a no for me. I can't trust it. You get what I'm saying? Amen? And some of y'all upset because y'all are burning and manifesting and reading horoscope types. I follow y'all on Instagram. Don't worry. God going to get you too. Amen. I'm praying for y'all. Um, but no, on a, on a serious tip, this is designed for you to get prayer partners and not all of these because some of these folks, just trust me, but it's designed for you to have prayer partners, people where you can reason with, right? That you can talk to about the scriptures because essentially all of us are here because it's some part of us want to get to know Jesus better in some way, right? And yes, the preaching and teaching, it's amazing, right? It, it helps. It is a tool. It is not the only source that sometimes... Me, Pastor Chris, Adriel, Siobhan, whoever can be up here preaching hard, screaming, doing whatever, and you leave and on your way out, you ask some random person some random question, and their answer is the thing that makes you come alive. It's the thing that your heart has been waiting on for the last six months, two years. But if you're coming in here and thinking that it has to come through this microphone, you're missing all of what God want to do in you and through you. Does that make sense? The other piece is I know some of y'all funny acting. Y'all going to have to get rid of that. God ain't pleased. You can't let the hurt from other chapters keep your voice. I don't really have a lot of time to dive into that, but I could tell you this one more time. You can't allow the hurt from your previous chapters of life to take your voice. And by take your voice, I mean get you to the point to where you don't want to open up, you don't want to share with people anymore. Because it wasn't the people who hurt you. You hurt you. This ain't in my notes. But it ain't the people that hurt you. It's you. It's you because you decided to believe in people God didn't call you to. That's when we get hurt. You decided to fall in love with assignments. That's when we get hurt. You decided to let people be on your testimony. That's when we get hurt. But you sharing about what you believe about Scripture and what God has done in your life can't hurt you, baby. You've already made it past that stuff. Do you understand? You've already won in those areas. And if you're scared of gossip, just text me. We'll talk about that on another, because I got a real lesson for you for gossip, but the Lord don't let me say it over microphones because it come out a little rough, all right? So if, you, if gossip and other people's opinions is your thing, just let me know after service, and I'll be sure to connect with you at another time and give you my real thoughts about people and their voices, all right? Yes? Everybody good? Y'all feel good? Maybe not. Let's pray real quick, and then maybe you will feel better, all right? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your goodness. But we also thank you for being God. We thank you that we didn't have to do your job. We thank you, God, that you don't see us how we see ourselves. We thank you, God, that you don't treat us how we treat other people. You're God. And we acknowledge tonight that you are good. In all that you do, you are good. In all that you've allowed in my life, you're good. God, I have some things to complain to you about, but my decision is to be grateful. I have some things that have not worked out in my, in my favor or in my direction, but my decision is to show gratitude because I realize that things could be so drastically worse. 
And by drastically worse, God, what I acknowledge is things can be exactly how I prayed them to happen. And I would have lost my mind. I would have gave up. I would have committed suicide. I would have been a mess. I would have been married to the wrong people, children by the wrong person, life in the wrong state. God, I thank you that you saw better than I could ever see it. So I pray now tonight that tonight, God, you would give us understanding. You would give us clarity. God, that you would open up our eyes and our hearts so we may see the community that you have orchestrated for us with your own hand. Lord, remind us that while you put this community together, we're not perfect. So we still must test everything by the Spirit, but this is the place that you want me to try. And I openly and I honestly accept it for everything that it is and for everything that it's not. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Y'all, all right, y'all feel better now? We prayed, told the Lord about it. Um, I don't know. Is it, is it darker in here to y'all or? It's definitely cold. No, it's, it's, it's chilly. It's chilly. But I, 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 preference wise, you want this instead of the other thing. I were, uh, never mind. Y'all don't want me to get to, get to just rambling. All right. Uh, so we'll adjust it. It'll be a little warmer next week. But we're trying to, in, in all honesty, we're trying to just find the right temperature, right? Like on some weeks, it's warm in here. And then on some weeks, it's a freezer. And all right, so y'all just pray for the team, okay? Y'all just, y'all just pray for the team. Let me give you some scriptures first, and then we'll get into your questions. Um, as a matter of fact, before I get into scriptures, well, let me give you the scriptures since y'all already getting your notes out. Let me give you the scriptures. After I give you the scriptures, we're going to turn the music back on for just five minutes for y'all to get ready. I'll write y'all questions. Y'all think and then put some questions on the thing. And then once you got your questions, our, uh, our, our staff team will come around and grab your questions. Don't put your name on it. Hey, Pastor, this Rochelle, I just want to ask you. No, 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 no. Don't do that. Don't do that, Roro. Don't do that. All right? Um, Just put your question and and put it face down. All right. Here's some scriptures for you to take home. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8 through 22. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8 through 22. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8 through 22. Romans chapter 8, the entire chapter. Romans chapter 8, the entire chapter. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2. Welcome to all my friends that are viewing online. Um, I was told that y'all, y'all were really reckless a couple weeks ago. So I, I want us to talk about it in a few minutes. Let me give y'all these scriptures first, because yeah, I, I heard y'all was talking about my knees being out, and I don't, I don't take kindly. <laughs> I don't take kindly. I told Siobhan, tell y'all to post pictures. I want to see what y'all look like at work, not doing y'all job. All right? Now, I'm just joking. I'm joking. Do whatever you're doing. All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1 through 11. I got a lot of scriptures, by the way. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1 through 11. Philippians chapter 3, verse 7 through 16. Philippians chapter 3, verse 7 through 16. Y'all tracking? Y'all all right? Yes? Everybody good? All right. Got more. Um, Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 through 23. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 through 23. And Revelations chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. I know that's a book half of y'all ain't never even been to. It's scary. You got all type of stuff back there. I know. It's crazy, then. it? Revelations chapter 2, verse 3 through 4. Y'all got it? John chapter 15, verse 1 through 4. Did y'all smack y'all lips? Y'all ain't Christian. Y'all not Christian. Y'all not Christian. I knew it was coming too. I was just waiting. You couldn't control it. Oh my God. All these? Who gonna read all this? 
I got like four more too. John chapter 15, verse 1 through 4. Somebody like, I'm not writing none of that down. I just watched the replay. <laughs> Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Matthew chapter 16, verse 21 through 25. Matthew chapter 16, verse 21 through 25. I got two more friends, and I swear to y'all, I'm done. Matthew chapter 16, verse 21 through 25. And I want you to put these two scriptures together, right? Well, I mean, I'm sure you got a list, but these two you got to read together. Romans chapter 8, verse 39. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Your last two. Romans chapter 8, verse 39. And Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Y'all got all that? Y'all feel pretty confident? The first one is 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8 through 22. Online, I hope you got it, but y'all got the privilege of being able to rewind this back in a minute and, uh, and, and, and getting it. All right, let me tell you something about your notes, uh, and then I want you to write your questions. Uh, y'all, keep in mind, note-taking is one of the ways that we, we reinforce learning, right? Repetition. You hear it, you say it to yourself, you write it. It helps to retain information. But if you want to be transformed by your notes, you go back and study the notes. You read what the preacher said, not just me, you read what the preacher said. Then you go study the text yourself, the actual scripture yourself. Some of y'all who may be new to studying, you can use uh, a software like www.blueletterbible.com, right? Blueletterbible.com. You can put your scripture in there, and then once it comes up, there's this little thing on the side that says tools. And the tool uh, bar, it will define all the words from its original meaning. It will give you text commentaries, which is where people who study scripture for, their, for a living has visited this text and with all of their resources, they have studied the text. They are going to refer not only to their own understanding of the text, but to other the theologians and people who study the text. They're going to refer to other scholars and that type of stuff so that you can ensure your understanding of the scripture is right. Does that make sense? So I, I just want you to remember this one note. You probably want to put it in your notes as you remember this note. Notes are designed to help me study more or better. They are not designed solely for memory, right? Your notes should work on you way after you leave this room. Does that make sense? And I guess a lot of people who take notes, and you got notes from every class. You just don't go back and read them. That's, that's like, that's my note-taking preference, right? I'm going to take some notes and throw it in a binder and throw the binder somewhere. And now I got notes from everything I heard in every area of my house, but I ain't really going back to them. That's a lack of discipline. Yes? Because sometimes I could be so impressed by the message, I don't care about my notes. But that's me feeding myself because my appetite is not always wholesome and healthy. Am I making sense? All right. All right, y'all got all the notes? All right, let's take, um, and we're getting out at 8.30 tonight. I'm not playing with y'all, so y'all could, could already set your timers. I'm, I'm leaving out of this room at 8.30. Um, but I want you to get your index cards. Don't laugh at me, friend. I'm, I'm dead serious. Y'all ain't going to hold me today. Um, I want you to get your uh, index cards. If you have questions, if you have questions, um, I want you to write them on your index card. Every table should have index cards, pens. Blah, blah, blah. So if you have questions, especially as it pertains to the series we're coming out of, which is what do we do when God says no? I want you to please, ma'am, please, sir, write them on your uh, index cards. And our staff team will just be coming around randomly picking them up. All right. Y'all good with that? Yes. Sure. Yes. Thumbs up. Something. All right. All right. Y'all not as talkative tonight. All right. I'm going to save my comments for the end next time because... I may have ruined our whole Bible study tonight. All right. Um, so y'all take some time. Take some time. Talk at y'all table and uh, write some stuff down. And then I'll be back with you in the next five minutes so we can jump into all those scriptures I just gave you. Okay? Yes? 
Des, can you turn up the music a little bit for the saints? And then uh, we'll give them a couple minutes. If you're online, put your notes in the comments. If you're online, I want you to write your notes in the comments. And uh, Siobhan Cole, who is running our online uh, inbox, will make sure that we get it. All right? Yeah, you can give me some music and, and we'll give him five minutes. He deserves the praise today. Come on, everybody, all over the room, open your mouth and worship him. Lift your hands and bless him in this place. Simple song. So 
do. Can we lift our hands together one time? My hallelujah belongs to you. Everybody, come on in concert and say it. My hallelujah belongs to you. All right, y'all good? Did everybody get food? All right, Kendi, they told me to tell you that that's your usual scent. Amen. If y'all could, uh, y'all probably can't look at the camera, but if y'all could just say out loud, hey, Kendi. No, y'all say it. Say, hey, Kendi. Yeah, Kendi decided to play hooky, and she's watching us from online, so I just want to make sure that if you're one of our faithful in-house viewers, you don't, you don't get to just go online because you decide not to show up. Amen. We still here, Kendi. Just your seat is empty today, so it's weird, but we'll go on anyhow, I suppose. Amen. You got to deal with the ones who decided to show up. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now I'm messing with her. All right, let's start. So here's the first question. Um, the first question is this. The first question says, you spoke about sanctification and meaning, right? And it's meaning. How do I know if I'm in the phases, right? Y'all remember what sanctification is or no? All right. Um, for, for those of y'all who wasn't here last week, sanctification is a divine process of maturity in Christ in phases. Sanctification is a divine process about your maturity in Christ in phases. Or if phases is too much of a throw-off word, just process, in process right? It's in, it's in process, right? It's, it consistently happens, right? Um, sanctification, sanctification has a duality to it, right? So, I, and, and, and I'll tell you as we go through the scriptures that I gave you that support this clause, all right? Number one, sanctification has a duality. So, if you're taking notes, write this down. There are two, there are two dominant phases of sanctification, there are two dominant phases of sanctification. Number one, I am, and I want you to write it just as I say it, I am sanctified through Christ, period. Don't write the word period, put a period, because uh, y'all in the all caps, period. No, no, friends, just put a period, put a period. Y'all ruining all of English, all right? Um, I am sanctified in Christ, right? This is important to know because while we accept sanctification as a process on our end, we are already sanctified because Jesus died on the cross. It is a process on our end. It is a done deal as how God sees me. God does not see me in process. God sees his final product, his child, right? So on one end, I don't have to tell people, I'm in the process of sanctification. I ain't reached it yet. You, you ain't got, that's, that's for internal knowledge. You're sanctified because Jesus died on the cross and because Jesus has chosen to have relationship with you. It's done. Do you hear what I'm saying? Let me give you a scripture reference to support my claim. And, and John chapter 15, this, this is twofold. I gave you it for another reason, but I'll give it to you for this too. In John chapter 15, um, let me read to you what it says. In John chapter 15, the Bible says, I, this is Jesus speaking. I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Um, and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it so that it can be, it can be more fruitful. Listen to verse 3. This speaks of sanctification. Y'all ready? Verse 3 says, you are already clean because of the word which I've spoken to you. 
I don't, y'all not going to get me caught on this one point. Jesus said, you're already clean because I spoke it over you. That's it. But Lord, I still cuss. Friend, you're already clean. Not because of what you did, but because of what I said about you. Well, Lord, I, 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 I ain't married and I'm still... Lord, you already clean. Not because of your behavior. Not because you've changed some of your mind. That's the process of sanctification that's going to address that. But friend, just because you're maturing don't mean I find fault in you. Do you hear what I'm saying? As a parent, how many of y'all got kids? Okay. How many of y'all got nieces, nephews, ever seen a child before? All right, just making sure. <laughs> you may ain't never seen one, you know? Um, <laughs> you already anticipate that a toddler would fall because they're not totally accustomed to walking. Yes? You anticipate this. It doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with the child. It's the stage they in. Sanctification is much like children. Just because he don't walk like I do doesn't necessarily mean there's something wrong with his legs. We're in two different stages of this. There's going to come a time, hear me children, where I'm not going to be able to walk. And the baby that I gave grace to fall may be the one pushing my wheelchair. Why am I mentioning this to you? Because you can't get wrapped up in your own self-righteousness so much that you forget there will come a time where you fall again. And you're going to need the same folks that you watch fall with no grace or patience to restore you again. You know, like the Bible says, if any man finds himself in sin, if any man finds fault, he should go to those who are spiritual and be restored. Why? Because the stuff you're dealing with, you're just dealing with it with the people you around. In heaven, you are already clean because of the word I've spoken over. Nothing changed about you when you did that. Not in heaven. Between your ears it did, but not in heaven. You didn't lose value because of bad decisions. You sanctified for real. You saved for real, even when you don't feel like it. Does that make sense or no? All right, so the first step is I'm sanctified, period. The, the, the punctuation mark, not the ghetto term. Um, I'm saved for real. Uh, but the second piece is I am also sanctified in phases. I am also sanctified in phases. Right? Let me read to you this one. Let me read to you this one. It's just, I just got a bunch of scriptures that I want to read to you tonight because they're all really, really good. Um, and then hopefully by reading all these scriptures, it inspires you to read some of these scriptures. All right? Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2. Read it. It reads like this. To the church of God, which is at Corinth... To those who have been sanctified in Christ Jesus, saints by calling with all who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord, their Lord and ours. What Paul is saying is to the church in Corinth, to those who've already been sanctified, that does not mean that their process of sanctification is complete. That means Jesus has already done his part. You understand what I'm saying? Right? So I want you to write this down. I want you to write this down as a note. Sanctification is a status, not my character. Child, I hope this is freeing somebody because I almost threw the microphone and just walked off. When I read that, you can ask Siobhan, I almost cursed. I didn't know what God wanted me to do with that information. I was just so shook. I was just like, oh, my word. All right? Uh, I didn't say that part, though. No. Uh, sanctification is a status, not my behavior. Everybody good? 
All right. You can't be sanctified unless you're saved. Yes. So if I can't, if I cannot by faith, if I cannot question my sanctification, I surely shouldn't be questioning my salvation. And not shouldn't as in it's bad, it's wrong, God upset with you. I shouldn't as in I got it and I don't have to question it. Right? Have you ever looked in the mirror and said, am I really Dwayne High or am I Jeremy Johnson? You've never done it. You've never like, did they mix me up at the hospital? I can't be who these, I'm not Amber. I just don't feel, like when I woke up this morning, I was clearly an Ashley. Like you've never thought like that, right? The same way you're sure about who you are, to whatever degree, amen, thank you, Jesus, some of us still growing, is the same way you got to be sure about your salvation. Here's a question you got to ask yourself. Do you believe Jesus? What I mean, do you believe him? I mean, do you not? Do you believe he lived? Do you believe he lived? Do you believe he died? Do you believe that he was buried? Do you believe that he was resurrected? Do you believe that Jesus is the son of God? If you can cover that basis, baby, you got it. You hear me? You got it. Do you hear me? You got it. Do you hear me? Y'all ain't hear me. You got it. You got salvation. You not going to hell. No matter what your old pastor told you. Do you hear me? Right? You, you, you have been. You could be raggedy and still be saved. Do y'all hear me? Some, some people say, friend, they trifling. Real, I just dealt with some trifling people today. Trifling. They work at a church. <laughs> but they saved. <laughs> you know? I, I, y'all not going to make me say here, but I'm going to tell y'all this little funny story. Never mind. Well, no, I can tell you because she's not going to watch. My little sister's a little trifling. You understand? She's my little sister, but she's a little trifling. All right? But listen, no matter how trifling she is, She's still family. I don't care about her behavior. Her blood makes her family. Her behavior may suggest otherwise. But when she needs an organ or a blood transfusion, there's a certain group of people they call first. Why? Because the likelihood of us sharing some of the same stuff it's highly likely. So who do they call? The first of kin. If you love Jesus, somebody should be calling a Christian on your behalf, especially you. Is this making sense or no? Because, friends, we share the same blood. And half of your issues don't need your friend who Muslim. <laughs> half your issues don't need your friend who, who believe in whatever they believe in. Half of most of all of your issues, I can already diagnose them. All of your issues need Christ. And you know who Christ used to handle some of our issues? Christians. It's easier to borrow money from my older sister because we family. My little sister ain't got no money, so that's why. But my older sister, because we family, right? It's hard to make the bank give me a loan. You understand what I'm saying to you? You could literally have a problem and your answer could be at the table you at and you don't even know it. Because God sent a solution to your problem before you ever had the problem, but you don't like to talk to people because of other seasons when you didn't follow God. And now you're bringing your godless rules into a God-loving relationship, and it ain't working on your behalf. I bring all this up because this is the benefit and the bonus to being saved. Right? I would venture to say, some of us are only struggling with God because we got unsaved habits. And when we really need things done, we reach for our unsaved tools more than we do prayer. Making sense? You already saved, baby. There is nothing, Romans chapter 8, verse 39, 
There is nothing you can do. There is nothing on heaven, in heaven or on earth or in the earth or under the earth that can separate you from his love. And if you cannot be separated from his love, then technically you can't be separated from his voice unless you decide not to hear him. Am I making sense? And then God, in his own way and in his own fashion, will still talk to you. And you'll be like, man, I, and you would have to do everything you could to try to run away from it, like end up in the belly of a great fish. I'm in Jonah chapter one. I know some of y'all are like, great fish. I don't even like the water. Uh-uh, I'm talking about a Bible text. All right. So, number one, <laughs> I'm already sanctified. I'm already sanctified. Um, my sanctification is a status, not my character or my behavior. Number two, my sanctification is a process. My sanctification um, is a process. Romans chapter 8, verse 16 reads like this. My sanctification is a process. Romans chapter 8, verse 16 reads, The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are the children of God. You see this? And if children, heirs also, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him so that we may be glorified with him. I can't read the rest because I'm, I'm not going to get to the rest of the thing. So, so number one, that we are, we, are, we are sanctified. It is our status. It's not our character. Um, in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 2, um, you can read it in your spare time, but I just want to give you these three words in that verse. Y'all ready? Number one, the first word is chosen. I want you to write it down, and beside chosen, I want you to remind yourself, God chose me before I ever had a chance to choose him. We don't have enough time to talk about this, but I want to remind you that God chose you after he knew all about you first. So nothing you've done, said, or become is a surprise to him. He actually chose you knowing you would make that decision after you told him you love him. So sometimes you got to remind yourself in the worst seasons of your behavior, still chosen. Sometimes you got to remind yourself when family circumstances and myself make me believe that God don't want nothing else to do with me, still chosen. Am I making sense? The next one, destined, which means God didn't just choose me. He created a plan for me. I'm destined to be what God called me to be. It's really my destiny. It's the only reason why I'm still alive. It's the only reason why I'm on earth in the first place. Because Jeremiah chapter 1 says, I know the plans I have towards you. Say it's the Lord. Right? All right. So that's destiny. Last, sanctify. The reason why I want to bring up 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 2 to you is because in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 2, it explains to you, God did all three of those himself without you. Am I making sense? In a weird way, I'm just the manifestation of God's dreams. I'm who God dreamed me to be. I don't have time to mess with y'all. Y'all too quiet, and I, I feel like running, if I'm honest. Uh, but I, I am exactly who God dreamed me to be. I'm, I'm exactly who he called me to be. I'm exactly who he thought I would be in his head before he ever made my mama. And he still chose my crazy self. Sometimes I'm shocked, too. <laughs> I ain't going to lie. That's a wonder. Oh, my. That's a miracle by itself. You got in? No, nah, okay. Y'all ain't, ain't ready to have real conversation in church. I cannot believe. I just knew you weren't going to make it. All right. All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1 through 11. I cannot read it all. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1 through 11. Here's just another way that I can prove to you that you are justified. And, and, and the process of sanctification is in uh, Philippians chapter 3, verse 7 through 16. I want you to turn there if you turn in there, but I'm going to move fast. So if you don't get there, just make sure it's in your notes. Philippians chapter 3, uh, verse number 7 through 16. Can I read it for you? Thank you so much for that permission. Y'all are such an awesome crowd. Um, of which I was made a minister according to the gift of God. I was made a minister. I never chose it. <clears throat> according to God's gift, I was made a minister. Am I making sense to you? This is why you don't have to get ready to do something to accept your call. You've already been made into the thing God called you to. Anything you're doing now is just disobedience with an excuse. All right. I was made unto a minister. Y'all still with me? 
All right. According to the gift of God, I'm just reading it slow because I lost my place on the thing. Okay. According to the gift of God of his grace, which has given to me according to the working of his power to me, the very least of all saints. Because Paul got insecurities, too, based off what he did. Which means you can serve God and be insecure. You will get it later. To, to the very least of all saints, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unfathomable riches of Christ and to bring the light, which is the administration of the mystery, which for ages have been hidden in God, who created all things. So that the manifold wisdom of God, may, uh, the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known through the church. How do people. Get introduced to who God really is through you. The people in your life don't know God. You got a little more work to do, friend. That's it. And it ain't your job to save all your friends. It's not your job. You're not in the salvation business. You a recipient of that. You can't get that out. I only received it. I didn't know how to make it happen. Because making it happen ain't your job. But telling people what happened is. I was crazy, man. I gave my life to Christ. I got baptized. I came out that water, man. I was still crazy. <laughs> That's sanctification. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> uh, to, uh, to make known through the church to the rulers and the authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose which he had carried out in Christ Jesus, our Lord, in whom we have listened in it, our eternal purpose was carried out in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Verse 12, in whom we have boldness and confident access through faith in him. I don't have to be confident in my ability. I'm confident in the one who called me. I don't have to be confident in my reputation. I'm confident in the one who called me. I don't have to be confident in my behavior because it changes oftentimes when my emotions are involved. I'm not confident in it. I don't trust him at all. I am confident in the one who called me to preach. All right? Um, so we have confidence. We have boldness uh, uh, through, him, through faith in him. Therefore, I ask you not to lose heart. Listen, I ask you not to lose heart uh, at my tribulations on your behalf, for they are for your glory. Don't worry about that part. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father from whom. Y'all know what? Y'all be shaming yourselves. Clearly, I've been reading Ephesians this whole time. That's crazy to me. Y'all would sit here for seven verses and don't say no. And I'm talking good, too. No, we got boldness. This ain't it. Y'all get on my nerves. I'm never coming back. It's a mess in here. I'm sorry. If this your first time, that's not my fault. I literally gave them the scripture. And I'm reading it like, this makes no sense. <laughs> Literally, every verse, I'm like, where is this going? <laughs> this is not what I study. My bad, big dog. All right. Nobody help, but you've seen it. Room full of people, no help. Hmm. All right, let's try it again. Philippians chapter 3. I'm going to start reading at verse 7 this time. If you're online, it's your fault too. You should have said something. But whatever things were gained to me, <laughs> those things I have counted as loss for the sake of Christ. This makes so much more sense now. <laughs> I said, oh, Lord, that's so wrong. More than that, I count all things to be a loss in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus as my Lord. Oh, thanks now. Now that you know I'm right. <laughs> For whom I have suffered the loss of all things, like my attitude and my pride. We'll talk about it later. Uh, and count them as rubbish so that I may gain Christ and may be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own derived from the way I live. 
from who I know, from what I was able to accomplish. My righteousness is not connected to my success. I can have money and go to hell. But my righteousness, that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection, in the fellowship of his suffering, being conformed to his death, in order that I, might, that I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not only that I have already obtained this, not that I have already obtained this, or already become perfect. This is Paul saying, I understand what Christ did for me. My life just don't look like it yet. I, I'm pausing so you can think about it. Apply it to your own situation. In my life, I don't see the proof of this. I just believe God for it. Making sense? And, I, and I'm taking my time here, and I want to be intentional, even if this takes me all night. Because, friend, you are holding you back. It ain't the devil. It's you. It ain't your friends. It's you. I almost said the N-word. It ain't the person. Thank you, Jesus. That's like my greatest fear. If I say it, I'm going to just start crying. It ain't <laughs> you. Oh, my God. I'm just... Woo! All right. <clears throat> All right, it's not the person that's in your bed or in your heart. It's you. Friend, you are holding you back because you refuse to let you be great. How, how, how Pastor, am I refusing to let myself be great? I'm trying to be great. That's the problem, friend. You are already great. You just got to accept what he called you to. Am I making sense? All right. So uh, 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 that I may know him in the fellowship of his uh, in the fellowship of his suffering, being conformed to his death in order that I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Paul says, verse 12, not that I have already obtained this or have already become perfect, but I press on. When I look at my imperfection, it inspires me to go harder for him. When I look at my imperfection, it doesn't make me change my behavior. It makes me pray more honestly. When I look at my imperfection, it doesn't change my seat at church. Hey Amen. I need to move closer to the front. I'm missing it. No, friend. No. But it should inform my study life. Not only have I uh, or became perfect, but I press on that I may lay hold of that which also I was laid hold of by Christ Jesus. King James says that I may lay hold of what lay hold of me. I'm trying to grab the same hand that grabbed me. That's why I don't lose heart. That's why I don't give up. That's why I don't compromise. That's why I don't, I, that's why I don't stay in my mistake longer than I'm supposed to be there. Because ultimately my job is to grab the hand that grabbed me. Am I making sense to you? All right, so he says, um, um, brother, and I do not regard myself having laid hold of it yet. I haven't even did that part yet. But let me tell y'all what I do do. He says, I only do one thing. I told you all that just to explain to you this one thing I do. Here's what I do. And you've heard it, but let's really talk about it for a second. One thing I do, I forget what's behind. A lot of our relationship with Christ are complicated because we love our past more than our future. That's it. I can read the rest of it to you and explain sanctification, but if I, if I let you think that you got to take your past into your sanctification process, then you've ruined sanctification because you're trying to aim for self-righteousness to explain why you ended up in that. When you could, just forget. No, I can't. It hurt. Well, heal, baby, so you can forget. But you can't, you can't smoke that away. You got to heal. You can't screw that away, friend. You got to heal. You can't work yourself to death and get over that. You got to heal, baby. One of the things my therapist asked me the other day, I, we was going through like my little childhood, and it was all, 
you know, all of the roller coasters that come with that. And she said, okay, she said, okay, Dwayne, I want to ask you a question. And I said, okay. She said, I heard how you feel about your mother and your father and the people when you were growing up, right? And their decisions and how that impacted you. Help me understand how you feel about God since he's the one who allowed it. Here's my, no lie, here's my natural response. Girl, who you talking to? Who you talking to like that? Like, who told you that you could be this fresh, right? And I told her, I said, you know what, friend? I've never considered him. And maybe the reason why I haven't healed from it is because I've locked him out of it. Maybe the apology I want is not from people. All right, all right. See, y'all ain't serious about healing. Maybe I want God to explain himself. Maybe that's what's at the core of my brokenness. That I want him to stand on trial and tell me why he felt necessary to let them do. Then the other part of me says, I don't really need that from him because I see why that was possible. Because what I learned in my life is that stuff couldn't break me. Do you realize you've made it through all of your hard times? All right. Do, do you realize that there were times you thought you was going to lose your mind? There were times you thought you would never, your heart would never be the same. Your heart would never adjust. Your heart would never heal. That people have said stuff about you that, that you felt would alter your forever. And look at you today. You ain't going to be nothing. You remember that? Now look at you. All right, I, I can't because I'm, I'm getting called. Uh, so, 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 so. Sanctification, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1 through 11. We are sanctified. Uh, see, y'all made me do it again. We are in a process of sanctification. Philippians chapter 3, verse 7 through 16. Y'all got it. All right, I'm not staying there because apparently the Lord doesn't want me to. The next question is, can we be saved and not know God? Can we be saved and not know God? Go to uh, Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 real quick. And please go to Matthew this time. Somebody And look, look, this front table kind of, all right, now you go to Matthew. Okay, friend, I'm there. <laughs> and what? <laughs> all right, Matthew chapter 7, verses 21, it reads like this. It reads like this. It says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But, but, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. Many will say to me on that day, because you know a day is coming, yes? Okay. Many will say to me that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name cast out demons? And in your name perform miracles? And then I, being Jesus, will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you, you who practice lawlessness. This is the only thing I can say here and I got to hurry up and move. You can know exactly who Jesus is and never receive him. When Jesus said, I never knew you, it's not that he's ignorant or don't know anything. This is why I tell you to study, because when he says new, that's not talking about knowledge. It's talking about intimacy. And not intimacy like, you know, intimacy as in true relationship with one another. I did not get baptized to escape hell. I got baptized to develop a relationship with the one who saved me. Am I making sense to you? Some of y'all just thought, oh my God, I need to be baptized. No, you don't, friend. I just told you, if you believe, it's good. All right, so that's, that's, that's uh, scripture number one. Let me go to scripture number two. Revelation chapter two, verse three and four. It, Revelation, the last book of the Bible for the first table. Uh, Revelation chapter two, verse three and four. <laughs> uh -huh. Thank you, Lord. I knew he was going to give me my lick back. This is, Je this is Jesus writing a letter to a church. 
Chapter 2. I'm going to start at verse number 2. He says, I know your deeds and your toil and perseverance, and that you cannot tolerate evil men. And you put to the test those who call themselves apostles, and they are not. And you found them to be false. Verse 3. And you have perseverance and have endured for my name's sake and have not grown weary. But I have this against you. That in all of your church, you have left your first love. I found out about you that you, you don't like evil, that you figured out this behavior thing that you are challenging people who's using my name in the wrong way. You don't do the whole evildoer thing. You're not wasting time being busy trying to build a kingdom of your own. But in all of the great things you've done, you've missed the most important part. You've actually gotten away from it. You've left your first love, which means you learned enough about me to act like we cool. But we don't even talk no more, friend. When last time we just got together just ourselves and no music? I just messed somebody up. Because worship don't need music. Your devotion time don't need a five-minute devotional. I just need to hear his voice. And he's really like, I love how you, I, I love your behavior. Our hearts just not on the same page in this season. And this is uh, Revelation chapter 2. I encourage you to read it or at least study this little part that I gave you. He is writing to this church before this church ruins its relationship with him. Because that's really how God want to do us, right? Before we ever mess it up, he want to holler at us. He doesn't want to condemn us. He just want to remind us how we have a healthy relationship. Females, y'all probably get this better than anybody because y'all famous for that we need to talk text, you know? <laughs> like y'all, that don't even do nothing to your spirit. To me, it makes me nervous. I'm like, what? Who got cancer? <laughs> yeah, I ain't done nothing crazy. I've been at home, so this is a lie, you know? I'm a Christian, all right? <laughs> no, 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 but for real, for real. This is all, this is all Jesus saying to the church of Ephesus. Baby, we need to talk. We're not on the same page right now. And yes, you got the doing part right. You're struggling with just being with me. When you, I don't have an issue when you, when you leave the house. Or I, even throughout your day. We just don't talk like we used to. You're not in that word no more. You don't care what I say. You just listening for preachers. All right. See, that's too much. I know. I know when y'all have had enough. All right. The next question is, if we can't earn our relationship with God, how do we get to know him more? Yes. If we can't earn our, is these good questions? Y'all good? Okay. If we can't, I'm knocking all these things down. If we can't earn our relationship with God, how do we get to know him more? Go to Hebrews chapter 11 for me. Hebrews chapter 11 and go to Hebrews front table. Hebrews chapter 11. Where Hebrews at? No, I'm messing with you. I'm messing with you. You don't know where it's at. It's in the Bible. Hebrews. Hebrews, Ephesians. So da 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 Hebrews. Oh, my little thing on it. Hebrews right here. Okay, okay. All right. Hebrews chapter 11. Y'all there? Now, I'm going to read verse 6. Thank you, friend. Verse number 6 says, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 says, and without faith, it is impossible to please God. Right? So when you say, if you can't earn a relationship with God, how do we get to know him more? Well, one way is you need faith. Right? Without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. King James should say, he exists. And that he is a reward of those who seek him. King James says, he is a reward of those who diligently seek him. So the question is, if we can't earn our relationship with God, how do we get to know him more? Seek him more. Seek him more. 
Remember we were talking about uh, Exodus chapter 33, what Moses says. God, I'm good with all the stuff you gave me. I need more, though. I need more you, though. I, I, I'm good with how our life is coming out, but I, we ain't going no further without you. So we're going to pause everything else for a second. I don't want to lose it. I just want to pause it. Amen. I don't need to be homeless to know God. No, 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 seriously, y'all, let me help you. Uh, I ain't going to get to a lot of questions, but we, we can do questions next week, too. We got a lot of time. I want us desperately to get out of the punishment phase of relationship growth. My life don't have to suck for me to want more of God. But the reason why some of our lives suck because we don't want God other than. Hello, somebody. If the only how my parent can make me listen to them is by whooping me, then whooping becomes the first priority if, I, if the parent needs me to listen immediately. God is not so. God is not so. God does not have to whoop you to get you in line. Oftentimes, God may not even mention it. Prove it to me. I'm so glad you asked. Peter is by a fireside, and he's warming his hands. Jesus has gotten his beard ripped off of his face. They have beat him to where the Bible says that Jesus' mother no longer recognizes him. Jesus has chains on. They're walking him from judgment hall to judgment hall. Peter is a distance off, it's what the Bible says, and he's by the fire warming his hands. And the Bible says that Peter denies Christ three times. Then the rooster crows. The Bible says Peter wept. Right? The Bible says Peter began to weep, and the chapter ends, which only allows you to understand that Peter wept for a while that the Bible didn't keep up with. That he felt the guilt and shame of denying Christ. Right? To the point to when the angel comes to the women to tell them to go back and tell the disciples about Jesus being risen from the dead, like he said, they, they say, go tell the disciples and Peter. Because Peter is so guilty, he ain't even with the disciples no more. Y'all missing this. Because your guilt and shame will make you forfeit the place you rightfully deserve. Am I making sense to you? That your guilt and shame actually got you thinking you deserve the bad parts of your life. Your, your guilt, not... Not conviction of the Holy Spirit. Your own guilt and shame has convinced you to live beneath God's best for you. That's why you almost married to the wrong person. It's not love. It's guilt and shame. Because somebody has lied to you and told you it's loneliness. So now you don't feel lonely. You think you got the right person. But that's not it. It's the guilt and shame about my inability to be disciplined so at least I could be undisciplined with a person the right way. No, ma'am, no, sir. Am I making any sense? So, so, so Peter is warming his hands. He's going to cry all night. The, the, the angels say, go tell the disciples and Peter. They go tell the disciples and Peter. What's Peter's first response? Soon as Peter find out, he run as fast as he can back to the grave because he need proof. But when Jesus shows up, First time Peter sees Jesus, Jesus doesn't say, hey, dog, what's up? You, you, I told you. I told you he was going to. He don't mention it. You know what Jesus says to Peter? Peter, you love me? Peter said, yeah, yeah yes, I love you. As a matter of fact, I love you more than him. Because Peter had time to think about it, right? Like, Peter didn't really thought through it. But also... Peter is in, in, in his guilt and shame so much, he's become self-righteous. He's in this guilt and shame so much that he really believes he know how much you love Jesus. And maybe the only reason why we can judge people the way we do is because we're so deep in our guilt and shame and we don't even know it no more. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, I love you more than all of them. And Jesus says, Peter, do you love me? Lord, I love you. I'm serious about it. Jesus says, well, Peter, do you love me? And the Bible says Peter gets agitated. Now, Lord, you know I love you. What, what, what are we doing, right? 
Now, the background to that, no, y'all need to know that. That's too far. I, I, I say all that to say that when it comes to your guilt and shame, oftentimes God's prescription for your guilt and shame is just his love, not you feeling bad about what you did and said. God don't need to sit you down. He just will love you more. Oh, God, y'all are. I'm just trying to, trying to get through my little Easter lesson. God, God loves you so much. Like, I, don't, I think y'all don't understand this. God loves you. Like, your love for another human can't compare. It's not worthy to be compared. He loves you so much that you cut him, but his blood was for you. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so, so he, he, he is. He, he doesn't combat our failures with guilt and shame. We do that to us. And then lie to us and tell us it's him. Well, God just dealing with me because the other day I lied and I cheated on my taxes. So I, my, uh, the car broke down. I get it. All right. Y'all know y'all be cheating on them taxes, though. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Well, some of y'all. Amen. All right. So. So we can't earn relationship with God, but we get closer to him through our desire for him. Make sense? Yes? All right. Um, the last question, and then I'll go into some of these questions, then we'll be done. I got 10 minutes. How do I know if I'm really in the presence of God in order to hear him? Hebrews chapter 11, the entire chapter. Uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 39. The way we know that we're really in the presence of God in order to hear him is that we have faith in him. That's it. That's it. Faith. Even when we're scared, faith. Even when we don't believe it all yet, faith. Even when we can't make sense of it, faith. Even when we don't have the words, faith. The only thing you need to hear God clearly is faith. Read Hebrews chapter 11. There are no special experiences in Hebrews chapter 11, just faith. All right? Everybody good there? All right. All right, I'm going to go through the questions. Any comments or concerns so far? I got 10 minutes. All right? I don't see no hands. Everybody good? Y'all feeling all right? I love your glasses, friend. That's why I keep looking over there. I, keep, I just can't not see them. All right. All right, let me read these. I'm going to put my eyes on. You hear me? How do I continue to become a better person? without continuing to beat myself up for the things I've done in my past. Did I answer that already? Did y'all feel like that was answered? Faith, friend. Forgetting, Philippians chapter 3, forgetting those things that are behind me. Your accountability to your past was taken care of on the cross. You never have to go back there. So how do you do it? Stop going back there. Because now you're only punishing yourself for things God is not holding you to. God knew you was crazy. We thank God for the baby, though. All right? You get what I'm saying? All right. How to fight. How to fight. Okay, let me read it myself first. Okay. How do I, how, how do I fight the devil's temptation? When I'm, when I'm caught up in my daily life or my day-to-day -day life. Now, now, thing number one, and I must make you aware of this. You cannot be tempted by the devil outside of your own desires. If you're tempted, you want it. You can't tempt me with crack. I don't want it. Not gonna do nothing for me, dog. You want a little bit? No, brother. I'm not, it doesn't, I'm not thinking about it. You know what I mean? I got a whole list of stuff, but it ain't appropriate. But it's just so many things you can't tempt me with because I don't want it. But tell me you got a job that'll pay me $250,000. See what I do. Lord, you better say something quick because I'm, I got boxes at my house just in case the call comes, you know? 
I love this Bible study, but for two fifty, I'll send y'all a text. <laughs> right? So how do I stay committed when I'm tempted? It is to deny myself my own pleasure. The devil can only present you with what you already want. So you ain't got to rebuke him. You need to rebuke you. It's me, Lord. Lord, Lord, save me from me. I'm a Lord. Hurry up. Make my phone turn off. Do something. All right. Does that answer your question? We are not tempted, and I, and I encourage whoever wrote that to read the book of James, just do a personal study on the book of James. We are tempted with us. If you want to know a biblical way to, to avoid temptation, go read Matthew chapter 4, starting at verse 4. But we are tempted with us. And, and, and essentially what Jesus tells Satan when Satan tries to tempt Jesus is, we got that already. You missed it. How do I avoid temptation or how do I conquer temptation? By knowing God's going to give you that what you're chasing after, just not right now. And it's going to be better if you wait than if you cheat it. All right. Am I making sense? I gave y'all scripture. Okay, next one. Why do we give so much credit to the disciples when they, are, when they were disobedient throughout their journey? Because they us. Because they us. They are us. You really think, like, and, and we preach it, it's the preacher's fault too. We really preach like, if we were there with Jesus, we would have done better. Not me. Not me. He here for real? Shut up. Oh, I'm about to get into some stuff. I'm testing all his Jesus powers this week. Lord, you didn't want to just jump over them? Why you ask, excuse me? You Jesus. Next, I'm pushing. You know, we give the disciples credit because the disciples are an example of who we ought to be. Imperfect people who never leave his presence. You hear me? The only time the disciples really got it wrong is when Jesus wasn't present. Now, Peter had a mouth on him, so he always said the wrong thing. But other than that, and they fought a lot, but that's just us. This is why I don't leave church, because I don't like people. Because the disciples were not good, close friends. They had a common friend that created their friendships. And it was more about the assignment than them. So the reason why we give them credit is because they're who we ought to be. The disciples in the gospel grew up by the book of Acts. And our hope is for God not to leave us when we deny him, not to leave us when we abandon him, and to still use us when we don't deserve it. Right? So this is why they get so much credit. All right? All right am I answer? I don't want to be surface. Am I answering these for real? Y'all good? All right. I got three minutes, Siobhan. How do you understand the difference between God's no and his yes? Ooh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Oh, Lord. Okay, help me with this one. All right. How do we know the difference between God's no and his yes? There is no concrete understanding of it. That's number one. That God will not always give you confirmation. But sometimes he will. The one thing that's consistent through all this is faith. Um, that's why as a homework assignment, you got to go home and read Hebrews chapter 11 and 12. You got to study it. You can't just read it. So for the next two weeks, you should be studying Hebrews chapter 11 and 12. But it's faith, y'all. None of this works without faith. That I have to have faith enough to know when it's God because my faith has worked on me getting his voice clear. I think the problem is we only want to hear God's voice when we need him to say something immediately. But if you strengthen your ability to hear him when nothing is happening, when you need to be able to discern, you already know his voice. But some of us only want his voice when it's critical. Am I making sense? So we, we, we have to develop a greater sense of devotion because I'm growing more and more. Like I could explain to you how I know it's God's voice, but it may not work for you. Y'all ready? For me. 
It's a knowing. It's, 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 it's a knowing that overwhelms me. There is like no competing interest. There is no competing thought. And, and I have a cheat code that most people don't um, because it's, I, I know his voice from talking about him so much. I'm trying to give you a tool here. I talk about him so much, I've gotten used to hearing him tell me to say certain stuff. Mention their kids. Mention this, mention that. That ain't to call them out. That's to let them know God really know what he's talking about. Like you could be sitting in church and be like, oh my God, how they know that? Right? You ever had that experience? I feel like you talking right to me. No. I just heard something and I said it because I know to say it because I'm used to hearing it. That's how I know his voice. I didn't learn it because I was so devoted in scripture. And if I'm honest, that wasn't how I heard his voice the first time. First time I heard his voice, I didn't even really care. I just liked church, but I didn't really care about the whole baptism thing, right? Like, I just, I just, it was fun going. There's a lot of crazy stuff happening in church. Y'all don't even get to enjoy church. Like, there's a lot of crazy stuff happening in church. You can just see it. Such and such going to shout today, but she don't shout in her seat. She got to stand in the front and shout. Y'all don't get joy out of that. Y'all, uh, not me. Look at this mess right here, Lord. Hear your people again. Right? 8.30, Siobhan. So I know his voice um, because I talk about him often. Talking about him often started making me hear things that I could not explain. But I knew it could only be him. So I started seeking him, not for those conversations. I just wanted the voice, no matter if it wasn't attached to anything. I know his voice more because I only want to know his voice. I don't have nothing that's dependent on him saying something. I'm the something that's dependent on him saying something. Does that make sense? I can't tell you. His, his yes is it's usually uncomfortable. That's not always true. That's not always true. His nose is the thing you want the most. That's not always true. You know it's God when it don't make sense. Cool. Not always true. Right? Because I always have to take into account, sometimes I feel like a nut, and sometimes I don't. And I say that just to mean, I always have to take into account that I may mess this up myself. So I learned his voice just so I could know his voice. And all of a sudden, I never struggle on whether it's his yes or his no. Right? Because he's going to give it. But here's the other piece. Sometimes God don't answer. Oh, y'all knew that one better than the yes or no. Okay, I'm good with y'all. Sometimes God don't answer, but y'all didn't let me finish when I want him to. And the problem with God, Reggie, the problem with God not answering when I want him to is that I don't have patience to wait for God if he don't answer. So I usually make a decision for him if he don't make it on time. And that's why I never hear his voice, because I'm never looking for it. I'm just looking for his answer. Father, tonight, we ask you in the name of Jesus to bless our time together. God, I ask you to ensure, God, that we all get an understanding. Our time together, God, although we may enjoy it, although we may... Um, get revelation and information. God, I pray that we always get transformation. That you would transform us from glory to glory. That you would continue to allow us to mature in your way and on your time. I pray tonight, God, that you would help us to fight. Not to fight. I pray, God, that you would help us to mature beyond our guilt and shame. For guilt and shame not to be deciding factors of our life or controlling mechanisms in our life. But for us to do like Paul did in Philippians chapter 3. To learn to forget what is behind us and press on toward the mark of the high calling which is in Christ Jesus. Thank you God for out of all of the tools and mechanisms you can use to get me right. You chose just to love me more. Now, Master, as we leave this place, but never your presence, help us to receive your love more. Help us to open up our hearts, our spirits, but more importantly, God, our minds, so that we can receive your love more. 
Keep us safe, God, as we leave this place, but never your presence in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This was such an amazing time. God bless y'all. Uh, we'll finish our questions next week. So if you still got questions, make sure you save them or go ahead and write them down. We'll finish the questions next week. But in the meantime, all this week, all next week, study Hebrews chapter 11 and 12. All right? Love y'all. See y'all soon. Make sure y'all get the rest of that pizza now. I can't take that home. That's for y'all. <laughs>